Hello and welcome to round 13 of the Bozra MSA GT3 Championship coming to you from Silverstone Grand Prix. I'm joined here by Paul Martin again for commentary and uh, it's been so long since uh, this race that I've actually forgotten how it goes, Paul. <laughs> Will you take yep. us through uh, quality re results? Not a problem. Not a problem, Jace. Uh, on pole we have Ben Hackinson in the Seagate Mercedes with a time of 145.9 on second flying lap, taking his tally of poles up to three in the season. Uh, on the second row is yourself, Jace, with your fourth second row start of the season with a time of 147.4. Neil Bamber had his best qualifying of the season with a 147.5, putting him in third position on the grid on the second row. And Matt Owens joins us for the first uh, session with the GT3s, uh, qualifying 22nd. Top 10 were separated by 2.1 seconds, and 23 of the 26 cars start the race set a qualifying time. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting set of results. We go through to the uh, second page, as you mentioned, Matt Owen there in, uh, oh, it says 21st on there, but whatever. Um, yeah, thanks for taking us through those. Quite an interesting mix, um, seeing Neil up there in third, that should give him a really interesting race, so um, we'll see how it goes, I guess. So this is round uh, 13 of the 15 round season, so everyone looking for those good starts now. And just before we do get to the start, let's go through the social media details. You can uh, catch Bozra on Twitter, you can see the details coming up on screen there now in the middle, Facebook as well at Bozra UK, and the YouTube channel, which is just Bozra. So we're going to head to the start, like I said I don't know what goes on here Paul, I can't even remember where I end up, so it's going to be pretty interesting for us to commentate on it pretty much live, isn't it? Yeah, very technical course, just like uh, Kuda. You know, we have to hook up that first section pretty well to get a decent lap time. And off they go to see exactly how technical this circuit is. It's a very fast one, but not a huge amount of overtaking opportunities. Looks very crowded there in the middle of the grid. Five cars very close to each other. Does everyone get through? Oh, no, they don't. There's a bit of a touch further back. Uh, most of the front runners getting through relatively unscathed, though on board looking back from someone oh and that's a bit of a jump start there is that Simon Jackson yep looks like it well be Dave White there going up the middle up the inside this is where all the confusion happens there so whoever that and that would have been Dave Rowland with a jump start oh and Ooh. Dave White comes out of nowhere there and uh, yeah, Alex Jan Laziva, I remember him not being particularly happy about that one and I can yep. sort of see why. Um, anyway, on board with Dion as we come through this early section of S's, really nice technical move. section. And that is a great move past Tony to be fair. Gets himself up into sixth position early on in this race. Great camera view back as well there. Yeah, I think Dave just uh, that first corner come get quite close quite quickly oh, and we have Sorg having a bit of a sideways moment yeah I was just about to say he's still a relatively newcomer but right up there in the thick of it and manages to hold on to that McLaren somehow uh, McLaren should be really quick around here it being an old airfield plenty of nice long fast sections on board with John Beresford oh, oh. and he just knocks is that that's Matty isn't Matty he in the Nelson, roof yeah, yeah. and uh, now we can put the first mention of his new nickname which is Miley Cyrus into a video so uh, there we go yeah, but he's had a couple of car changes so it's hard to guess who's who's who <laughs> yeah that's right and then uh, you see Craig down there in uh, 15th not completely sure why he's ended up that far back but he's making his way through the pack nice Possibly and early wants a challenge <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but he was in uh, at this point in the season he's massively in a fight with Ben for the top spot of the championship so I'm sure yeah, that Matty that would be Delden on that's Chris that's overtaking Chris um, yeah. Matty Van Delden and real close but they don't touch and it's a great move from Chris and then maybe they touch on the uh, the second phase of that but all good in the end on board or not on board even looking back at Simon Underhill trying to make the moves on Neil Bamber, who's kept that third position in the early stages. This is the long yeah. drag down to probably the best overtaking place on the circuit. Heavy braking zone. Nicely Simon. done, Simon. 
Yeah, brilliant. He's had a few good races. He seems to be getting it well hooked up. Yeah, this BMW suits him well, I think. And uh, Simon Jackson down here in 10th. So Wouldn't ten... have anything to do with better brakes, would it? <laughs> <It's potentially. laughs> Who's on the hill moments? Oh. oh, no, Simon. That's Simon Jackson. Yeah, same, oh. um, same moment as Soren had, just a little bit more wild, and uh, he couldn't save it, unfortunately, and stuck it right in the wall. Is he going to try and limp that back to the pits? It's always quicker if you can. Oh. oh. He's having a little bit of a adventure trying to drag that back to the pits. I'm not sure whether he just gave up there and uh, got the toe, but either way. For the second race run, we've got John Beresford and Chris Butterill. A close battle. Yeah, Chris on a charge after overtaking Matty on the previous lap, and he's, <laughs> he's just decided to uh, yeah. get rid of John, uh, which is a bit of a shame. That looked like that could have been a good battle, and he's also place he made up by hunting John off of the field has been um, conceded again by giving it back to Matty. Back from yourself looking on to uh, Simon Underhill. Yeah again he's on uh, an absolute charge since getting past Neil he's caught up with uh, me very quickly there he must only be a tenth or so behind really putting the pressure on and unfortunately He's, yeah, he's hit the wall as well. Real unfortunate. Simon um, yep. definitely having some good races, but he has a couple of moments like that at the moment. I'm starting to wonder whether he's related to the twins. But, um, well, um, if I do recall, it was quite hot and sticky, this particular race as well. Yeah, it's hot temperatures out there. You can see um, everyone's struggling to keep it on. There's, there's Barry having a moment as well. Traction limited on the exit. Um, goes a bit straight on. Yeah, this is that that corner in particular is quite technical. You know, if you give it too much, you know, you lose you lose grip and slide. But it's definitely one of those corners you need to go on the par early. Oh, that was close, wasn't it, was, Tony? On yeah. the back of Neil, trying to make an overtake happen in an odd place. Uh, but this switches back round to the right for the last corner, so he's going to have to hang it out on the outside. But. Yeah, Neil's done the sensible thing, getting that corner, knowing he's going to get hooked back up into the next corner. But the Audi's so fast in a straight line that... Um, I think Neil's, Neil's up, yep. He's possibly going to hook this up in the braking zone. Yeah, should should defend the position, and Tony's coming under pressure there from Dion as well, who wants in on the action. Great few corners here, and then they're going to come through these S's. Not really an overtaking opportunity, but the last of these S's, the last time will go right. You can just see the BMW strength, sir. They are already being a lot more unstable with those uh, sequential uh, number of turns they are. Yeah, absolutely. But that last corner, the right they've just come out, is supremely important for Tony to get the run, use the strength of the Audi, that straight line speed, as, long, as well as a bit of toe into this hard braking zone. And he does indeed manage... Oh, no, he doesn't. Neil's hanging it out on the outside. On, yeah. I've he done a brilliant job. Yeah, absolutely brilliant bit of racing. And uh, Tony's managed to collect his own moment as well. And I uh, believe that Soren in the background getting involved yeah. as well. So this is actually now becoming a bit of a five-car scramble for uh, what are we looking at third position still Tony trying to get that fourth position straight back off of Dion and there's millimetres between them this has been yeah, a whole lap out. now yeah all working nicely in the Neil's favour yeah yeah it is it's held them up a bit and Neil has got away Tony there we have in the background Phil Gregory uh, approaching as well he's got a had a good couple of races as well yeah uh, Tony and uh, Dion oh, touch, that's... and that's the worst possible ending for that little sequence. They were all racing brilliantly. Um, there looked like no malice in it, though. They've raced really well together and just had an unfortunate touch. Craig. Craig Parks on Al McKeon. Already up to sixth position there. Great bit of driving from Craig. You would expect if no less. If I do less. recall, did, um, I think Craig didn't put in his race fuel was at it and he had to start from the pits something to that I should order. know but I don't oh Barry oh, yeah Barry oh. having another bit of an nasty thump 
and got stuck in the barrier as well. So that's uh, no way of dragging that back and a long tow back being as it's on the uh, first corner. Ironically, I racing makes you... Briggs picked up the uh, battle for fourth, fifth and third. Yeah, he's got yeah. straight involved and Phil probably relatively sensibly just saying, no, you, you have the corner and I'll try and tag along, drag me along up to uh, Soren. Not sure whether yeah, that's Bill's, exactly what we Bill's did. found some good pace at the back end of the, the season. Some really good drives. Yeah, it took him a little while to get used to that Merc, I think, was the issue. The the breaking of the Merc. Oh, and as we're giving him a compliment, luckily it's not live, so it's not commentator's curse. curse. <laughs> but he stuck it into the wall. And he's deciding not to take it into the pits. That's interesting. My first reaction would have been to try and pit, but I suppose we're only on lap nine, so he's going to try and drag it out and Alan just oh. following Barry from the lap before but getting a bit luckier with it going backwards into the barrier and carrying on it's unfortunate yeah like you say it's very slippery in these conditions so people getting caught out yeah the BMW seems to be a lot more um, it's a lot more harsh it's very quick snapovers there yeah, it's much more difficult to save, I think, than a lot of the other cars. But they all have their strengths and weaknesses. It just so happens to be the BMWs, but with Tony... And Walker here and Tony. Yeah, going all the way around the outside of uh, Ryan and still having to do the same in lap behind oh, turn touch. one. Little touch, but it doesn't seem to slow either of them down very much. Simon Underhill here after his spin earlier, catching back up to Simon, oh, who's still again. very wiggly. Yeah, <laughs> He's struggling with the rear end of that McLaren, um, so he's doing a great job to keep it in fifth place there. I've watched a few of Soren's online races and he drives on the limit all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, I did, the, uh, it. did the Le Mans 24 with him and he, yeah, he was very good there. Um, yeah, he's, he's had a few of those moments so far. Craig all the way up to fourth already, it's lap 14 yeah. and uh, trying to go Both straight. Yeah. Start the combination of the guys in front, <laughs> making it easy and going off track. Yeah, he's done a great job. Made up eight places in the first lap alone, um, from 24th up to 16th, and then he's just made that position stick for um, for third. So next on his list will be little old me. Oh, Simon Underhill recovering nicely as well. Yeah, he's got up to fifth, so. Um, yeah, very, very much having a good race and deciding to take the pit. And Soren looked like he was going to follow him in, but I think it was just another moment. Yeah, it was. Simon. Yeah, the McLaren is uh, a beast of its own. I've never driven it. I uh, probably should give it a go at some point. I just like being behind it at times, seeing that fire spit out the back of it. Yeah. Simon doing a very early pit here, I think, compared to uh, a lot of the people in this race. Obviously got his own bit of strategy going on, and this is, I think, the first time we've seen Ben in this ben, race so yeah. far. He's uh, doing... Nice command and lead over yourself. Oh, yeah. You seven can't seconds. E can't even see me, yeah. He's miles in front. Um, and Soren... Oh, lad, nice. <laughs> oh, he's not, he's not caught this one, though. No. It, it was going to happen at some point. You could tell he was doing some kind of test drive for Top Gear. You know, nice <laughs> sideways actions for the camera. Yeah, that's right. Maybe you should have um, done some of the auditions. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, he's one of these drivers who's going to improve massively, I'm sure, over coming races. Um, if he can calm that little bit down and remember it's now a long race, then I think he's got the pace to oh, be at the front of that. catches it on the Astro turf, saves it nicely from the barrier. Yeah, there's a lot of people struggling with the exit of turn one. It's a, it's a really difficult one to get right, especially if you touch that AstroTurf on the outside. Danny Bailey, uh, talking of improving drivers, here is one. He He's finding some more pace, but his real improvements at the moment is in his consistency. He seems to be ending the races with the least amount he's, of incidents. He's chasing... Um, improving the right way. He's going for the safety, getting good laps in. Instead of going for all like pace and trying to overtake everyone he comes upon, which yeah. in oh that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Phil go trying to go past Dave White, who um, just turns on him, in on him. Uh, Phil came from a long way back, but I'm assuming Dave knew he was there. Um, it's unfortunate. 
Uh, well, Dave's usually quite vocal when it comes to uh, overtaking, so. Yeah, he is. Just a bit of miscommunication. Yeah, Chris having a little slide, another 56 car going sideways after Ryan's corner one. Oh, and there they are together on track. Always good to see a couple of teammates together. So uh, that is 10th position he's in at the moment. Doesn't lose a position by the looks of it through that, so that's good for him. Rolf. We have uh, Rolf and Phil. This should be an interesting battle to Mercedes. Yeah, Rolf, another improving driver towards the end of the... <laughs> I can't get it right at the moment, can I? I'm just, just going to, I'm just going to say everyone's yes. rubbish. <laughs> 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 everyone's rubbish and no one will crash. Brilliant. Sorry, Rolf, but there we go. Um, bit of a spin. But very considerately getting out of the way of Matt yep, and Matt yourself. Yep, and myself, yeah. Just trying to drag it back to the pits. Back on board with Craig, he's taking his pit stop. Um, just behind Dion and the Audi. Nice toe. Yeah, nice toe, but Dion taking that defensive line, he's going to have to go around the outside. Oh, not these old Craigies. Yeah, he's lined himself up well. And he's not even going to have to do it under the brakes. He's already in, although he does break early. Oh no, it's just Dion breaking late. Manages to keep it on the track though. And uh, Ian Thornton there, uh, back marker, managing to stay out of the way of, of a great little battle. Will we get the drag? Uh, I think he's about too far in front to pick up any kind of toe. Yeah, he will just be there trying to follow some of Craig's lines. Matty uh, going think... massively sideways there, but. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, oh. No. oh, he's put it in the wall. <laughs> I think he's just a bit too excited to see Ryan and, and Chris. <laughs> yeah. 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 Messed up the front of that uh, not Porsche. There we go. With so, Phil Gregory on the back of uh, Ryan Walker and Ryan Pitts. Yep, so that's after 12.9, laps. End of his I can stint. only say that Chris or Ryan's maybe possibly had a miscalculation of fuel at this stage in the race for a pit stop. Yeah, it seems like a, t uh, a weird time to be pitting at that point, so probably a miscalculation or down to an early pit. Ah, oh, Alan and Soren coming together. Didn't see enough of that one. It looked like Alan was trying to fit into a space that wasn't there, but potentially Soren j should have left him a bit more room. Oh, oh Tony following um, first one. Oh no, this is last corner. That's a more difficult place. Is Chris Butterhill going to take that? Thanks, like Chris. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, puts Tony down to 10th. 30th lap here. Uh, so we're getting into the latter stages, only a few laps to go. 31st lap, even. We must be on the 32nd. So, yeah, Chris taking that place relatively late on. And in fact, Ben here taking the win. This will be the, his, the end of his 33rd lap. Takes an absolutely commanding win. Done a great job. Yeah, it'd Takes be nice if I was following him and I was actually in second. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've you've managed Still to make it laps. into the uh, the celebration uh, scenes there, so that's good. Um, shows shows how much Ben's performance was great by the fact that uh, no one else around. Good result him. for Neil Bamber up in the third place. Yeah, yeah, he's so. The top three all finished where they started, which makes it sound like a much less exciting race than it actually was, but it really was. Fastest lap also goes to Ben. Second lap, 147.3. He also got the fastest average lap. He got his fourth win. Basically, he just completely dominated. Um, lowest number of incidents goes to myself and Neil. We both got one, narrowly missing out with... Um, a, uh, a bonus point which would be a bit of a shame Chris Butterill takes his highest finish in 8th there's the driver standings well done Chris yeah with uh, two rounds to go Neil takes 4th place off of Paul Wormsley who we haven't seen for a while um, Matty Van Delden overtaking Barry Bard as well Chris Butterill with his best finish as we mentioned moves up 4 places into 18th so shows what a how... shame yeah, well yeah you've moved up 1 yourself though um and yeah, it just shows what a good uh, 
finish can have for those people in the midfield in the table. So Acorn Printing there taking a 55 point lead into the last two rounds as well. So it's still very much a chance for Seagate to take that team championship. Wow, that was uh, pretty hectic, wasn't it? Pretty good race, very enjoyable, a lot of close racing. Very much so. And if you enjoyed that, then all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and you'll see future videos as we finish out the 2016 season. Penultimate round comes from Daytona Road Course. And then hopefully you'll also join us for the 2017 series starting in January. So yeah, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the sponsors and see you next time.